Hi, this is Stacey Scroggins, and this is Module 3, Video Synopsis of the Article Exploring Social Constructivism, Theories and Practicalities, written by Paul Adams, 2006. This article starts with a brief history of educational policy and presents the question that governments and other educational governing bodies have had over the past several years on how to determine cognitive development and learning can be measured. And is that best measured through test scores and test performance? And is learning and performance connected? The author presents that there are two fundamental points of learning. Learning or some aspect of learning occurs in the mind and behavior is not a reliable indicator of cognitive processes. Meta-learning is described as the ability to make sense of one's experience of learning. Meta-learning focuses on the quality of the pupil's learning and it also focuses on the thought processes used by pupils in that learning process. This is an active process of making meaning of the environment and of the problems. An example of this is when uh, my high school algebra teacher would be teaching us about a new complex algebra problem and there were several different steps and we would get credit for the processes and some of the equations that we would use in solving those problems even if we got the answer wrong. This slide is just a reminder that learning and learners are at the heart of the educational process, especially in the constructivist learning theory. Constructivist learning is social construction. So this focuses on seeking to understand how pupils create knowledge and how this influences their overall thought processes. This is a fluid nature of learning style and it really wants to know how individuals acquire, select, interpret, and organize that information. And this is seen more as a context of problems to be solved, to be discussed, and not just focusing on that final answer. There are several theories on social constructivism. The common theme that they all have is that the learner interacts with the environment as well as that social group of peers. The learner construction of knowledge um, can be described as a product of that social interaction and the interpretation and understanding. <clears throat> it's also a consensus between individuals and that truth is, is founded whenever individuals agree on that topic. Um, Wolfock in 1993 said that knowledge cannot be separated from the environment in which it is formed and that that is an active process of learning within that social context. And Hein in 1991 said that learning can effectively occur when students are enabled through the social elements which support their personal interpretation. So again, social constructivism um, really relies on the individual interacting with other people in their environment in order to facilitate learning processes. There are some common principles of these processes. And again, just to review, focuses on learning process and not performance. Uh, it establishes a teacher-pupil relationship built upon the idea of guidance instead of instruction. And the teachers really seek to engage learners in tasks that uh, sees the learners that they are having implicit worth. And it promotes an assessment as an active process of uncovering and acknowledging shared understanding. This slide is a comparison between the performance orientation and learning orientation. And again, um, you know, the performance orientation is focused on the test scores and the ultimate test outcome. This can be described as the phrase teaching to the test and focuses on uh, celebrating overall grades and test scores and are also very teacher-centered activities. Constructivism theories and learning orientations the effort brings the reward and that achievement is measured through the personal progress of the learner. And again, um, the learners seek to succeed in these difficult tasks and that serves to continue to motivate them to continue to learn more and doing more because the reward is through some of that effort that they put out. It makes me think of those sayings that, uh, you know, we are competing against the person that we were yesterday or the best scores that we had yesterday. The dual agentic learning, the learner and teacher engage in a co-construct and sociocultural realm. 
they um, have, make decisions and they serve as scaffolding to each other. They build each other up. They have support. They are a guide. They can be seen as a coach or a mentor. And these type of learning environments can give children time to be the listener or children time to talk. And the teacher is the listener and the observer. The teachers encourage and they encourage the pupils to interact with others in their social environment and to use communication skills to enhance learning through role play, concept mapping, and drawing. And again, there is a need for people-to-people -people interaction. This slide just summarizes that again, teachers are more of a guide, not necessarily an instructor. They are there to serve as a facilitator and try to promote knowledge and learning styles in children. They redirect uh, the pupils towards learning more and provide a safe environment that enhances learning. Uh, the pupils gain motivation from purpose and the sense of meaning. It also uh, supports the common knowledge or bridging the gap between a school and world learning situations and that acknowledges that learning does not always occur within the traditional classroom. In conclusion, uh, social constructivist theory relies on reasoning and the thought processes and that there is more than one right answer to the test score and it redefines the teacher-learner relationship. The author does invite the readers into a discussion and hopes to stimulate some debate on the traditional educational assumptions and performance-driven educational policies. Thank you so much and thanks for listening.